my image has been mapped out using a white transfer paper right now I'm going in with a auto air semi opaque white which I've over reduced with the 4012 reducer I've over reduced it uh, because I like it to do a slow build up the slow build up will actually allow me a bit of time to alter the image see where the image is actually going um, I'll step back every now and then and just make sure it looks as though it's it's building up in the right areas at the moment what I'm working on now is building up the brightest parts of my image I've checked I'll constantly check back with my reference and see where the brightest highlights are and just concentrating building them up first uh, the reference picture looks as though the light source would be from the, coming from the front of the skull so image, like areas such as the nose here will actually catch the most light same as the front of the jaw so I'll spend a bit more time on those areas just building them up um, I, I jump back and forth between areas because I you don't want to saturate the page so I'll move around a bit just uh, it's also fights the boredom a bit you spend too long in one area probably go cross-eyed so I'll, uh, I'll move on to something else if I'm starting to lose interest in that particular area uh, obviously in this the back of the skull and the side is it's not catching as much light so I'm not too concerned about detail in these areas so it's merely just um, a lot uh, I'll open the airbrush and just um, brush over it very lightly I won't worry about too much texture uh, not like on the um, edge of the cheek right here where I'm actually trying to chuck in some texture to begin with and build it up a bit brighter than the other areas because on the reference that is a pretty bright area as you can see I'm moving back to the side of the skull I don't like to sit in one position too long uh, it also helps with consistency as well I'll find that um, sometimes if the airbrush is running right and you come back the next night to try and do, try and replicate what you've done the night before things have changed the weather might be different might be hotter or colder the paint might be clogged in the airbrush the paint might be thicker or thinner so it just won't it won't work the same won't act the same so you might struggle to actually match what you've done the night before um, so if I actually move around the page and try and do the whole like, do bits and pieces of the whole image at least it'll all be it'll all be matching to some extent obviously here the um, the bright parts there are going to be the front of the jaw using an up and down sort of motion there with the paint on and off because it's it's a kind of a linear texture see the uh, side of the side of the jaw there on the outside is going to be catch a bit of light as well another thing I used to do when I was younger I I just used to black out the eyes and the the, the nose on the skulls not realizing that there's actually texture inside of them so that's something that these um well airbrushing has taught me a few things about um, taking notice of your reference pictures I never used to do that when I was younger and now that I'm doing that I'm actually picking up things that I never even saw so again the the bottom of the bottom jaw there is catching a bit of light which gives it the effect that it's actually tapering outwards and it'll actually I'll give it the effect that it rolls underneath as well it just enhances that 3d effect so I'll, I'll use an eraser to start nutting out those these details that's um, that's going to be the next step but for now I'm just like I said just concentrating on building up the image again there's not a lot of detail in the back and the side of the skulls so I'll just do quick quick little details and sort of open the airbrush up a bit more for a smoother flow you probably notice it's um, the video has actually been sped up uh, two times I was actually falling asleep editing the video so I figured if I had it at the normal speed people probably fall asleep watching it so bad enough at uh, two times the speed so again I'm coming back in working up working out the um, eyebrows because they catch they catch a fair bit of light on the reference so now that I've given it a bit of time to dry I'm coming back in and 
reworking it, just just lightening up a little bit more. The problem with this card, it's actually um, I'm working on a card of some sort. It's actually soaking up the paint, so you'll lay down some highlights and. After a bit of time, you'll find that the, those highlights have actually soaked in, so it's losing its opacity, and it's um, it's a little bit duller than when you first laid the paint on. So you just got to keep pumping that paint on. It's not like working on a metal panel, unfortunately. Um, and I didn't actually prep this board at all. Um, it's just straight card. I probably could have prepped using the um, transparent base. That would have given some sort of barrier to to adhere to, but. I, I just wanted to get get working and to be honest it doesn't bother me that I had to work it a little bit more this it's I, I enjoy it so so here we are just uh, highlighting the outside of the nose and the front of the top jaw there again and you'll notice that it actually brings out a little bit more again so it's each time you pass through it actually starts bringing the image out more and more out of the paper which um, start to get, get that 3D effect, which is what we're after. Again, I'm just jumping around the place. Wherever I see there's there's not much detail or shading uh, or um, highlights, I'll just quickly work in some light details. Eventually, I'll come back in with a dark mix and knock that all back anyway. So there's. I don't I don't care too much about overspray at this point in time. Any overspray can be either erased out in the next step or covered in my with my dark mix which is the the third step. You can see that's really starting to come out now work in those areas a little bit more each time. The bottom of the jaw there has a quite a bit of texture um, little holes and grooves and things like that so I'm going to start working them in now just with uh, dagger strokes and basically squiggles um, shaking I shake my hand uh, with the pulling the air on and off and the paint on and off and that's how I get um, it's almost like a mottled effect but on the side of the jaw there there's um, a lot more linear texture so I'll do a fair, fair few dagger strokes building it up over time there's quite a few uh, little holes and things on the edge of the skull there too which um, I can work in with my white mix just um, starting to bring them up now now that I'm getting a bit of a base happening what I try and do is not to lay too much paint down because um, I actually like to come back in and erase with a both an electric eraser and a pencil eraser the pencil eraser I use is a um, Faber Castle perfection 7056 and it's a pretty pretty hard rubber um, but if you lay too much paint down too thick you still won't be able to erase so I actually try not to to put too much on but with the card it's it's pretty hard on a metal panel it's a lot easier because it's not a porous surface uh, anything that I can't erase with a pencil eraser or the electric eraser it's not really an issue because I can actually put in that detail with my dark mix anyway when I um, in my third step so back in again on the eye socket, springing it out that little bit more. It's pretty exciting as you can start to see it develop. Each time you pass through, it, um, it just pops out that little bit more. Um, the best part is when you actually start putting the dark mix in, it really, really pops out because it'll set those areas that you're knocking back um, with the dark mix back further, which brings the white out, the, the lighter areas out even closer. So. That's where the 3D effect really starts to take form. So what I'm going for now is um, I, I want to cover the whole the whole skull eventually with white, but 
very very lightly I don't I want to do light passes so that those areas actually can be erased so I don't just come in with a heavy mix and cover it that's why I'm going in and doing little bits and pieces here and there very very slowly like I said this um, this video has been sped up two times so um, right now I've spent a fair bit of time just building these areas up um, and that's what it's all about just spending the time taking notice of what it's doing what the um, the reference picture is doing and just trying to replicate it as much as you can like I said it doesn't have to be exact and it's probably best it isn't exact because then like I said it's it, you've made it your own but just trying to just trying to pick up where the light source is catching uh, the the surface areas that's the most important thing because then you know that it's true to form see it's starting to build up now I've got a fair bit of coverage happening but I'm uh, still gonna go in and work some textures in long way from finished the brightest areas on my reference picture are actually a lot brighter than what I've got here so there's still a long way to go to build them up to the point where I'm happy which is good because there's a fair bit of texture I still want to work in um, and I don't want to work it in straight away sometimes I like to to get the uh, background built up, the, the base built up, and then start adding the texture in. And that way I know the texture is going to be there at the uh, the end. Sometimes the texture ends up getting covered in uh, at each pass when you pass over with the white paint. But now you can see the, uh, the nose is starting to get a full dose of colour, well, do, full dose of white. Unfortunately in this video you can't really see the detail that I'm putting in uh, the video quality is pretty bad I'm videoing on my phone and at this stage it's all I've got I haven't found something that's suitable to to record in low light situations so until I find something um, unfortunately this is all I got gives you some sort of indication of what's going on that's why I've put photos in this as well just to show what the, uh, the end result was like you should see the textures in those photos anyway here I open up the airbrush a little bit more and just give it a bit of a light coating a little dusting over that's just slowly bringing the opacity of the skull up uh, the texture still uh, appears through that coating that I just put on as well which is good and as you can see I start to add a few more brighter highlights, a few texture patterns in there. Back onto the front of the jaw, bringing it out a little bit more again. That's fairly bright on the uh, reference picture, almost bright white in the reference, so like I said, I've got a lot of room to play with on the uh, the front of the jaw there. So, But I won't jump straight into that, I'll just build it up a little bit at a time you can see I've sort of neglected the um, the areas around the back and the side of the skull where there's very little light because now I'm getting a little bit of form built up I'm starting to concentrate on the um, the highlights again building up the the brightest of textures the rest of the video is pretty much the uh, same, just the building up of the white, adding the textures in. So I'm going to stop talking at this stage because I'm getting sick of listening to my voice. I'm pretty sure you guys would be too, so I'm going to put some music on instead. Thanks for watching the video.
Thank you.